Mates, no exaggeration, I'm pretty sure this franchise has earned about the same amount of dollars for the same amount of lives taken in these movies. The collateral damage damn near has to be more than all of the MCU movies combined. It, it is so tragic. Like, imagine dying to Godzilla. So as someone who is pretty much a hero and just released an awesome and in-depth look at the MonsterVerse last week, highlighting and discussing all of the various reasons why an idea and concept as ridiculous as basing a massive lore building and multi-movie structured deal around a giant lizard and a giant monkey without the capability of dialogue is a wild choice. But my god did that gamble pay off like that last 2am lap before you call it a night. Today, Godzilla x Kong, Godzilla cross Kong? What, what, what are we calling it here? I've seen some people just erase the entire X entirely and just go with Godzilla Kong. Which is so crazy, because saying Godzilla v Kong wasn't really that big of a deal. I don't know, I'm going on a tangent. Whatever you call it, somehow this ridiculous idea of a cinematic, lore-abiding universe centered around a giant lizard and a giant monkey has somehow found its way into becoming the highest grossing movie of 2024 thus far. Only second domestically, but who's counting? Which is kind of crazy, because honestly, I think this is one of those movies that we haven't really had in a long time in regards to really knowing what you're investing your time, money, and brain cells into, or lack thereof depending on how much fun you want to have. So I didn't really expect Godzilla x Kong to have the opening legs that it's had, but that's on me because while we have more recently gotten movies like Madam Web or The Marvels or even Rebel Moon, where it was relatively obvious from the first trailer releases that we were in for a couple shitters. That's not actually fun. While the internet as a whole would like to have you believe that the bad movie business is the best movie business, and yes, for some people it is, but for the majority of us, nobody actually likes to go and spend a quarter of their paycheck on a trip to the theaters ready to watch shit on a screen. Hence why movies like Madam Web or The Marbles or many other movies flop after you've seen all of the online hate. <laughs> but not for these two kings. We haven't seen these two kings thrive like this on the big screen since our goats Iron Man and Cap, and we all know how things have gone since then for that respective franchise. But genuinely, Godzilla x Kong The New Empire is one of those fun, escapist, B-list monster movies that you'll never watch again until you're sick, and it's on cable on that random Saturday as you pass in and out throughout the runtime as background cheeky music. And while yes, these movies are also extremely stupid, and we're starting to chart into the Fast and Furious territory in regards to how far we can push the limits with the audience, I'm still pretty positive that this universe and these characters are still many, many people's guilty pleasures, and I can still easily say that there are truly a lot worse movies that you could be watching right now in the theater. But that's enough yapping. Let's talk. Yeah, there's not really much of a plot here, but I guess that's also to be expected. But I can say that I do at least respect the writing room on this one. We're truly just writing anything and everything and just seeing what really sticks. And while I will definitely not be giving the team credit for certain setups having certain payoffs, like this random little girl that's Kong's best friend being the girl who saved everything, I will say that the lore and world building isn't that half bad and probably the best aspect when it comes to the cinematic universe as a whole when you don't count the two main leads. But the plot as a whole still revolves around Kong and the character journey that he's on. Following the events of the first movie in this probable trilogy in Godzilla v Kong, the two find themselves in the most harmony that the 13 people left on the planet could hope for with both now establishing their respective territories. Godzilla on the surface world and Kong in Hollow Earth, with Kong's main driving force being to find more of his kind. Pretty simple, but apes are actually social creatures, and they explain that in the movie, and it kind of makes sense, so... Oh, wow. The movie really kicks off, though, with the world building and introduction of the Scar King, an evil Kong, but I'm pretty sure an orangutan version, who the lore says was able to pretty much match Godzilla in a 1v1, but lost the latest match and was sealed within Hollow Earth by the goat himself. 
With Scar King now released from his prison, his eyes are set yet again on the surface world, ready to reign as the Earth's greatest and most formidable titan. Which is pretty unlucky for my boy, because I'm pretty sure he's just a couple years too late. Probably could have had us back in those 2014 days. Our boys are way too buffed now. So we might as well talk about our characters of the hour. It's unlucky because if you're a Godzilla fan, sorry mate. I mean, when he is on screen, it's epic, don't get me wrong. But it's relatively obvious who the main character is. And Kong as that main character is still absolutely fantastic. It's pretty incredible to see how far CGI technology has really come because I genuinely care more about Kong's feelings, his emotion, and his journey more than, say, 75% of the new characters introduced in Marvel's phases 4 through 5. And when we aren't watching Kong go through an actual character journey, which is still pretty weird to say, the action still leaves nothing to the imagination. And while the movement and the weight of these giant animals is starting to become a little cartoony, for all of the reasons I mentioned before, isn't that kind of hypocritical to expect more from this franchise? And that's the thing, what's awesome and what makes a dumb escapist movie like Godzilla x Kong and a franchise such as the MonsterVerse such a fun and enjoyable time at the theaters is that the studio, the people involved, and the consuming audience are all on the same page. We're all on the same vision and we all have the same mindset. I feel like I touch on it in so many videos because there are so many movies that make the mistake of not knowing what their audience wants a growing problem in Hollywood when it comes to the studio to audience relationship. But you have to give a quick shout out to all of the people involved in running this particular cinematic universe, because there hasn't been a lot of misses when it comes to the side of audience expectations, and while I have no idea how long they can actually keep up this simple of a premise, it still doesn't take away from the fact that the MonsterVerse as a whole has low-key become Hollywood's second most successful cinematic universe behind the titan that is the MCU which I can confidently say wasn't on anybody's bingo card when the first Godzilla movie hit theaters a decade ago. So in a ranking system, or I guess you could say a grading system, that is relatively new, or I guess I shouldn't even say relatively new, this is a new grading tier list being added to the end of every single video of mine, or I guess I should say every single review on my channel, I started this a couple weeks ago with my Kung Fu Panda 4 review and I continued it with my Ghostbusters Frozen Empire review. I would say go watch those two videos, but you're just going to see where I rank those here, but you could always just go do your boy a solid. I still think I can comfortably say that Godzilla x Kong The New Empire is a solid A for effort type of movie. And let me tell you, that's not a bad thing. The studio knows exactly what I want from these characters this premise, and this franchise. And Warner Brothers continues to deliver the supply to my demand. And while I'm sure my taste will change in the future depending on how long Warner Brothers decides to stay married to this formula in regards to these IPs, for now, I'll gladly take my plate of mind-melting and brain-cell-destroying escapist fun with some of the most iconic characters and monsters ever put to screen. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.